protecting your theme on these last two. <laughs> Watch out for lightning bolts out there. Our next writer, Barbara Barrows. She's a member of Waterline Writers. She's a big help to us here uh, in our little community. And the Fox Valley Writers Group. She's been writing poetry for the last 13 years and counts Mary Oliver as a major influence. By day, she's looking for a job in photo research, so if anybody has any leads in that area, she's over there, she'll be up here in a minute. As her last one, her last job that is, disappeared after 12 years. By night, she is a writer, abstract painter, and actor. She and her daughter live in Batavia with two cats, two dogs, and way too many books. Barbara. Thank you, Waterline Writers and uh, Water Street Studios. Um, oh, yeah, glasses. Uh, okay, so I wrote this, uh, continuing the theme, um, I wrote this, going to a funeral. So, <laughs> this is called Tuesdays at 10. <coughs> we head west on Route 88, deep into farm country. The, la the land is drained of color this time of year, a study in various shades of death. Save the occasional red barn. Even the sky is a dirty blanket of blue today. When green is absent from this place, fix your gaze on the distant line between heaven and earth, blurred by the windbreak of spruces, and go to that interior place that can be thrilled by the glimpse of a red wing on a fence post, or the model pattern of yellow straw woven into the blackest of earth. This is your prayer to offer up. Switch the order here. Abandoned hallways. This is actually one of the, this is the third poem I wrote so, when I started writing about 13 years ago. Abandoned hallways. I may be haunted by a cunning specter. In the back hallways of my brain, long since abandoned, I catch the scent of another. Sniff again, and it is gone. Hear a footstep and a closing door, and nothing else. I run from room to room, opening hangered closets, craning under strict beds to find this apparition yet to be confirmed. I stand breathless on worn linoleum, sucking in stale air, a faucet dripping into the rust-stained sink. There is a slight scrape in the next room. As I move to the door to continue my pursuit, I glimpse a faintly familiar face in a mirror clouded over. Look again, and it is gone. January 3rd. Even as I stand in this darkest day of winter, a solitary figure in the middle of a wide circle of white, hemmed in by a distant rim of trees, there is a buzz of so much light from all this thick new snow. The company of fellow man exists only in the yellow moving dots, car high, flowing beyond the stick shadow woods. It should be night, for the park closes too early. Closed at sunset, says the sign, except that the light of this snow keeps throwing itself back up to the sky till the dark is ghostly bright. It could be quiet, for life is in this subterranean now, except an oak tree refuses to relinquish its corpses, and they rattle low and secretive tonight, like locusts, like a pebble brook, like that spring rain no one seems to mind. So much quivering and so much stillness. Then two yellow lights break the wide circle and move to the center, to me, the lone figure. And two more dots, blue and red, fastly spinning, tell me that I must leave this pale, pure sanctuary. Um, collection. Not a very flattering self-portrait, but oh well. <laughs> Oh, bring me a token of your love, any book or bell or candle, some tiny thing, some rose quartz thing. I need to see your affection take form. Any pool, any pin or jewel or chocolate, frame your love in a package for me to hold and consider. Etch a paper with endearments for me to fold and cherish. Tis not the object but the gesture, for I will box this token in wood and forget its existence until some withered day I chance upon it and smile with remembrance at your love, tucked in with favors from all the others. 
<clears throat> and uh, this is um, a friend of mine who can't be here tonight. Uh, I kind of wrote this for her, but um, in a sense, it's probably good that because she's watching my daughter, and if my daughter were here tonight, then she would be sitting in the front row and kind of, you know, correcting me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, offering a different version. And I would have to say things like, no, honey, that's mommy taking literary license. <laughs> and then I'd have to explain that, and then it would get all confusing. So. This is for Sarah, who likes July. It, oh, and I, I think I also really lifted a T.S. Eliot line here, so you get points if you can figure out which one that is. For Sarah, who likes July. The days are getting shorter and wholly written in a minor third, for we are above the 49th parallel. M was right about that certain slant of light on winter afternoons, cathedral tombs and all. The weight bears down from within. The organs denser grow. Thoughts, sinew like contract at five, then four, then three o'clock. Ray, the rays withdrawing from the room take bits of soul. Only the night and candlelight will give them back. Um, for those of you, uh, that was uh, the four, the five, then four, then three o'clock. That was TSL. I suppose I should put that in quotes so I don't actually get in trouble. <laughs> uh, the last one here um, is uh, One November Day. So, now we're into the month of November here. We, the dogs and I, are at the dog pond. A marsh, really. It is us and the geese who fly the slate great sky over the slate blue pond. At first glance, this is a dead land. Demeter in her morning season. Yet life still pulses slower and beneath the smelly black muck of decomposing plants, now frozen to a hard crust. It is easy to overlook this beauty next to the exuberance of summer. I stand in a subdued gold of dried reeds, set against the blue-gray mantle, not wishing for anything else. The black V's of geese keep coming, and my eye scans the sky, trying to catch them as they first appear over the high horizon. This is autumn. This is solemnity. But nobody told the dogs. They leap over the reeds and race through the narrow marsh paths, thundering these small black horses with unbridled joy. Taking turns leading the charge, they catch the scent of some hidden creature and disappear. Moments later, one shaggy head, one sleep, pop into view, smiling doggy smiles, I swear. Two geese land in the water, the dogs give chase to drive one up and out. The other stays and honks repetitively for its mate on this day of Thanksgiving. Thank you.